What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current, a very exciting episode for myself um, as far as Eastern Current goes. It's just really cool to see um, you know, how this can be used in, in bigger ways than just fishing and learning about fishing, but uh, really my whole mindset behind this whole thing is to bring together a community of people um, that care about a fishery, that care about fishing, that can be a voice for conservation, and this is just... Um, it's, it's just moved me a little bit to know that through Eastern Current, we've been able to already start um, some movements in that way. And so I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to let them kind of take this away. But uh, we're, we just got a really cool initiative that um, Dave and Ralph from iStrike and Joe Neely from CCA have been um, working on really hard for the past couple months. And we're excited to release that and to tell you all about that here through the Eastern Current podcast. Um, and so we are going to do that today. And I'm going to stop talking here because they really know everything. Um, I'm just kind of... Uh, fostering this whole relate or this whole podcast here if you will so i'm going to go ahead and bring on dave and ralph from i strike and uh here they are what's going on guys how's it going judd thanks for having us yeah for sure Appreciate being with you, bud. definitely definitely so yeah. l- tell everybody uh, a little bit about what what this whole initiative and kind of campaign is all right so uh we're really excited um to announce something here call- we're calling a release over 20 and it's a conservation initiative that um, really got it took flight based on Eastern Current. Actually, um, we were talking about this on our episode that we did with you, Judd. I think it was episode three, so it goes a long way back. And um, we had a, uh, a very uh, important listener there, which was Joe Neely from CCA, who you're going to hear from in a minute. Um, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about what it, what it is. And basically, it's um, encouraging people to voluntarily create an upper slot for trout. And the, the reason is that, um, you know, as a whole, our recreational anglers were overfishing our, our fishery. Um, people, you need, to, you need to believe that. It's true. It's, you know, that the number of fish in our estuary is fixed. And our population is exploding uh, through podcasts and technology and um, social media. We're all getting much more efficient at catching fish. And the, um, the laws aren't keeping up, to be quite frank. And uh, several years ago, I was asking someone here in South Carolina that was pretty influential in, in the whole hierarchy of how laws are made. And I was asking, is there ever a possibility we could have an upper slot for trout? And and basically, I was told there's no way it's ever going to happen. Um, and I don't, I don't know about North Carolina, but in South Carolina, um, our laws for natural resources are made by the legislature, not by the DNR. It's just the way it is. It's very political, so things don't change quickly. And it's, it was just really frustrating to me. And um, I was just thinking, what, what can I do as a recreational angler to make a difference regardless? And that, and that just the, the whole concept occurred to me, why can't we as anglers just set our own limits that are more restrictive than the law allows? And at that point, I decided, well, I'm just going to pick a number, some size trout, and make that my personal upper slot. And 20 inches is a nice round number. Down here in South Carolina, our trout don't generally get as big as other parts of the country. Uh, 20 inch trout is a, is a nice trout down here. And um, I just said, well, it's going to be my upper slot. So whenever I catch a trout over 20, I'll release it. And um, I would, I'd usually, I always take pictures and um, I would tell people on social media and forums, I'd say, you know, this, here's this nice trout, it's, you know, 23 inches. And it, I released it like I release all my trout over 20 inches because, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to do so. And not preaching to anyone, just saying this is what I do and this is why I do it, trying to lead by example. And um, over the years, I've had strangers come up to me and say, oh, yeah, I do that too because, you know, you mentioned it and I thought about it and I really believe and, and agree with it, so that, so I do it too. And Ralph and I were talking to, and thought, well, we'd like to make that so one of our core principles of iStrike. It just, you know, why don't, if we can get the more people we can get doing that, effectively we can have an upper slot you know if you get a lot of people to do it for example um you you might be able to move the needle even though you don't have a law if everyone starts releasing trout then you might actually make a big difference so that that's where it all started and um 
I don't know. I've been doing it myself for before I met Ralph. Probably been eight years now. Well, and, can, I, um, can I cut in just for a second and say thank you, Dave? Because Dave uh, came to me. We talked about it. But what you said earlier really strikes home to me. I'm a local guy. I've been fishing these waters since 1976. I've been fishing the same waters, basically the same waters, the inshore waters. And I can promise you the numbers and the quality of the fish are down. I could fish, take the Cooper River, for example. I could fish there on a Saturday back in the day and maybe see three, four, five boats fishing salt water. You go there now, you, you can count 20 or 30 in the same spots. The pressure's here. Nothing wrong with it. But they really struck home with what he said. we got to protect it if our kids and grandkids are going to have anything to catch because population's exploding. The resources is dwindling. And uh, we had an ice storm a few years ago, and we saw a trout kill. We've had different things. Uh, we've had some uh, some floods, the 100-year flood. We've had a lot of things that's affected our country. So I, I'm 100% behind it, and Dave's got me. And I'm old school. I'm used to back in the day. A limit of fish was when the cooler got full, but I have certainly learned over the years that's not not the way you uh, you need to do it. Uh, we eat a lot of fish. My family likes fish. I, I tell Dave, and I think I tell you, Judd, that uh, my wife she's a skinny little woman, but she'll eat more fish than a seal. So I just have to bring home three or four. It's what we're going to keep, what we're going to eat. But the resource is down. This is going to be a great way that we can all pitch in and and really help bring it back. Definitely. I think that's just, uh, it's cool to see. And I think it's something that's going to catch on with, with people that are, uh, you know, this younger generation of angler that's coming on. I think there's, it's a really good chance for conservation to become kind of the cool thing and the popular thing. Um, instead of, you know, you know, killing fish that we might not necessarily be eating. I've, uh, since I've heard, you know, Dave talking about the release over 20, it's been, um, something that I've been doing and sharing with my friends and, you know, and, and I almost, it, it's hard to not become judgy once you start doing it. Cause like I'll see buddies that, you know, post a picture of dead trout, you know, like 26, 27 inch dead trout. And I want to like message them on Instagram and be like, dude, why the heck did you kill that fish? And it's like, you can't get on them, but just like kind of lead by example and, and, and make it evident that you're doing that. It's just such a cool, it's a cool way to go about it. So, um, I, I'm going to give it over to you, Joe, and kind of let you you share how, how y'all have kind of fostered and built that relationship together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so kind of just to go off of what Dave was saying um, about how we have you know, kind of come about this whole program is, you know, I was just a casual listener of your podcast. You know, I've been, I guess, listened to it from the start last year and um, and heard, heard Dave and Ralph on here talking about these things. And it kind of occurred to me, I was probably, I drive all over the state <laughs> and I was probably on my way somewhere. And, um, you know, I realized that these guys were kind of speaking my language and it, it's always, you know, very encouraging for me. Um, you know, when I you know, hear about new people that are, that are talking about our resources and, and talking about ideas like this um, in a, I guess, a nuanced way, um, because, you know, as someone who spends a lot of time around these things, um, it, you know, it's not something that's, that everybody shares that, you know, not everyone's been exposed to these types of ideas. And, and if you haven't actually had the conversations with somebody about what uh, measures like this, like releasing over 20 can actually do to impact the resource um, in a positive way, then, you know, that person might never think twice about, you know, keeping, every fish that they, that they catch and, um, and, you know, realizing that, uh, that they can actually have an impact just by themselves. And so that's really how it started. So I, I, I went through you to get in contact with, with Dave and, and Ralph and, um, and it kind of just has grown from there where we have tried to develop this, this campaign to release over 20 as, um, you know, not only something that here in North Carolina, we can certainly benefit from Judd. I know you can attest that, um, you know, we've had some factors over the past couple of years that have led to one of, if not the best trout fisheries in you know, a decade or more. Uh, yeah. Um, and, you know, we've seen that all over the state where, uh, you know, a really bad cold stone a couple of years ago uh, that shut down the fishery and, you know, a couple of hurricanes that all relieve pressure. And then we've even seen, you know, some positive things from, you know, where there was some, some net removal in the Tarpam and Noose rivers that there's just been a ton of pressure relieved off of the trout fishery in the past year, um, since about January, 2019. And people have kind of, kind of 
that haven't seen that healthy, <laughs> that good of a fishing year before have been, you know, all about it. And it's, and it's really been a great thing to see in, in North Carolina as something that we want to see every year. And so it really just went back hand in hand with the things that, um, that CCA and I strike were working on around release over 20, um, as a way to say, all right, you know, this shouldn't be an anomaly. We shouldn't just, you know, say, all right, yeah, we got a good fishing year this year. And then, you know, we got certain things, you know, factors lead back into, uh, uh, stocks again, and then in a few years, maybe we bounce back a little bit. Let's figure out ways that we can, you know, maintain and preserve and sustain this awesome fishing uh, every year. And so, that's kind of the whole purpose of it is to say, you know, this is something that we can do, and it's kind of a grassroots movement. And yes, we're talking about trout, and and like like Dave said, you know, he kind of decided eight years ago that 20 was his upper limit and that's what we've named the campaign because we think it's a, a good number um, based on you know the data that we've seen um, about spawning potential of trout over 20 inches but you know as we've talked to many people around the state um, you know, there's a lot of people that are, are already doing this and have their own version of release over 20 they just don't have a name for it and if you have a name for it like this and you know have something like an initiative that you can be a part of it really helps you to start those conversations so that's the really important part that um, that a lot of our convers that a lot of our conversations with iStrike have been is yes it's about trout right now but more importantly the, the underlying um, thing that we're trying to get accomplished is to give people a way to start these conversations with other people that haven't been exposed to you know, the ideas of of conservation mentalities like this. Yeah, I think that's huge, man. And I, I really just think it boils down to people just don't really realize how important it is. I think if, if we're giving them a way to learn about, oh, this is something I can do. I can release fish over 20. This is a good thing. I think some people are just going to do it. They just need to hear about it. So I think that's yeah. cool that, that I strike and y'all are partnering together and through with Eastern Current, I think we can... You know, we've got a, a large enough voice all together that we can hopefully push this out there. And I can see it, you know, we're in the Carolinas, but I can see this taking off in Georgia and Texas and Florida. I mean, just giving it, you know, putting some wind in the sails of this thing and seeing what it does. So um, that's that's kind of kind of what I like. So um, does, so what what uh, where, who wants to take this and kind of, you know, share a little bit more about about what we're uh, doing here through release over 20? Uh, I think I'd you like probably to got some good statistics. Yeah. Okay. okay, sweet. I'm sorry. I, I like to share a few facts about 20 inch trout that we know. Yeah. This, this is straight out of uh, South Carolina DNR publication um, and kind of justifies why it's important to release them. So, um, most 20 inch plus trout are female. That's a, a fact. Um, egg production increases exponentially each year. Uh, for example, an 11 inch trout releases about 3 million eggs a year whereas an 18-inch trout releases about 17 million eggs a year. So the bigger the trout, the, the more eggs it's going to release. And they, spout, they, they spawn many times during the year, but that's just like an annual production, and it's approximate. Um, a 20-inch trout is about four years old, and they're very rare. For example, um, based on the uh, SEDNR estimates, if you start with 1,000 trout at year zero, by year four, only eight trout remain. Wow. So those are the 20-inch trout. So you can imagine how rare a 27-inch trout or a 30-inch trout is. Now, the numbers, you know, the, the fatality rate per year may be different in different states, but that's what it is here in South Carolina. Um, so, you you know, you're eight out of 1,000 is a 20-inch trout. Um, so why are they the, one of the remaining eight? So they probably have genes that allow it to survive. Uh, they might be more resistant to disease, more resistant to cold uh, events, cold shock events. They might grow faster than normal. I, I've got uh, my wife and I have some friends. the The husband is like six seven, and the wife six feet, and their kids are all. Like, one of their sons is like six eight. So <laughs> I mean, it could just be that a big trout is faster growing than all the others. Well, that's a desirable genetic trait to pass on. You know, wouldn't we all like to have trout that grow really big, really fast? Yeah. You know? So there's a lot of, especially the genetics. It's it's really important, you know, to to keep that going. And uh, our friend Chris Bush at Speckled Truth down in Texas, um, you know, I think he's can be credited for making 
catching big trout like a thing lately. It's like everyone around the country wants to catch a 27 citation or a dirty 30. Dirty 30, yeah. And um, that's really unlikely here in South Carolina, but um, it's not that unlikely up in, in North Carolina. But the more big trout we can get swimming around, it, it's like it's really desirable. People are out there hunting. I know, Judd, you're one of them, hunt, hunting for a citation. Um, and, you know, the more big trout we have going, the better it is for the economy. It's better for ice strike. It's, you know, better for all the fishing industry as well. So those are just some of the reasons that justify why you might want to release this big trout. I think a lot of the guides, too, we do, a lot of the guides we've talked to, they're all about this. They want their client, all they, their client wants is a picture of a big trout uh, they've caught. So we, we're having a good uh, a, a good conversation with most of the guides, and all of them are, are on board, say they're on board, and they want to learn more about it and get involved. So if we can get the professional fishermen doing it, then all their clients get in, it'd be a great way to pass it along. They'd much rather have a picture of a 20-inch trout than a 10. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that I had, had seen, and it's just it just kind of goes along with this idea of conservation and this movement of you know conservation within fishing, a buddy that I had on a podcast, and I don't know if I've shared this with you all or not, but he and some of his friends in Texas, like Texas and Louisiana are very popular areas for like, you know, dead table fish pictures. You got like hundreds of dead fish on the table each day because um, the limits are large and you take five clients out. Um, but so what they're trying to do down there is partner with different companies to um, these companies will donate products and they'll offer their clients the ability to, instead of killing fish, get their name entered in like a monthly raffle to win up to like a thousand, two thousand dollars worth of tackle and gear and stuff like that. And so it's just a cool, it, it's just a cool way to see. And I think that offering this release over 20 to the, or showing this release over 20 to them as well. Um, it's just going to be something that can can partner up with other movements like that and and uh, show people that you know conservation's cool. It's it's something that we need. Um, it, it doesn't need to be kind of uh, negatively looked at. It's for everyone's benefit and the fish's benefit in the long run. So uh, I think it's going to be well taken. Um, and I will uh, I'll let you, Joe. Do you have anything from CCA that that you want to share fact wise or anything like that? Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we've been kind of going on those, you know, that great information that Dave was sharing that, uh, that really, I guess, drove the, you know, the beginning thought process behind developing this campaign. Um, and it's just, it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, the difference in spawning potential from a, you know, 12 to 14 inch trout right around that slot, uh, or that minimum size limit and, um, and a 20 inch plus trout is literally tenfold in what they're capable of doing. And so, like you said, you know, getting stronger trout out there is, it's what it's all about. And, um, and that's, you know, it's really as simple as that. And, and so if we can, you know, bring, bring these fisheries to what they're supposed to be, um, that's obviously great for fishermen everywhere. And, um, I think one of you guys mentioned the other really important part that, uh, that we touch on a lot is, is the economic impact. Um, you know, we've seen you know, boat ramps full this, all, all through this winter and this yeah. drought season and, you know, in, in numbers that we haven't seen in a while. And, you know, those, those are things that, you know, if you get people to come into your state, and you know because you've got these this incredible trout fishery or you know if, if we get the flounder back in the right place or you, you, red drum you, you name it you know you get people coming or you know more importantly almost you get people to stop leaving north carolina or south carolina to go to to texas or louisiana then that that makes a huge impact in the economy of our coastal communities and and that's that's something that's very important and it you know trickles down all the way through uh, the tourism industry, hospitality, restaurants, you know, even the mom and pop, you know, gas station that sells ice, you know, that all those things um, are impacted in a positive way when you've got a good fishery. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that's one, that's just what we, those, those are the things that we want to see in North Carolina. And I know without a doubt that, um, that Dave and Ralph want to see in South Carolina as well. And so, um, that's uh, and it's it's also funny that uh, you mentioned the other campaign or other um, kind of initiatives and stuff out there, and the uh, uh, the speckled truth in Louisiana is it's another episode I listened to when he was on last year, and um, that's one of the conversations we've had um, with I Strike is you know 
what what is the future of release over 20 if we do get people you know getting on board um and you know helping us to spread this message you know what are ways that we can expand it in the future and and doing things like a dirty 30 release citation um something like that or you know pairing up with other other initiatives to really just you know compound um that you know the messages that we're sending out and that people can share with with their friends and and strangers i think all, all the better for the fishery and that's you know at the end of the day what what we're all about yeah definitely um i think that it's just a great move all, all over and and one of the things that i've seen as a struggle with people here in north carolina i'm um, just some buddies that i've talked to and, and joe uh, we were talking with a similar um, buddy about this but um they're like oh what's the point of releasing a fish over 20 inches because you know it's just going to swim into a gill net the next day mm-hmm. and get killed anyways um i'd like to hear kind of your take on because i i'm still a firm believer of like you know you did what you needed to do you released that fish um mm-hmm. what, what's kind of your take and, and your stance on, on that that uh kind of question there yes yeah, so, so we, we hear that kind of you know mentality a lot of times with you know in, in a lot of different situations whether it's trout or other fisheries or um you know specific situations that in north carolina you know um South Carolina is fortunate enough not to have to deal with the, these issues um, quite the way that we do anymore. But uh, that's always the underlying thing, you know, that's on everyone's minds. And, and CCA, you know, I've been with CCA for two years, but CCA has been in North Carolina for 30 years and right. been beating the gillnet drum for a long time. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are probably sick of hearing that. But that's, you know, that's the number one issue we've got. And so I understand when when people do, you know, raise you know, com- comments about like a release over 20 campaign, for for example, about, you know, why would I do that if it, if it is just going to end up in a gill net? And so, you know, my, my answer to those people are, you know, they're kind of missing the point. And, you know, exactly. It, we get people asking us all the time, you know, how can I help? How can I be a part of this? Because you know, a lot of people feel kind of helpless in North Carolina about, you know, the continual decline of our fisheries and you know people respond in different ways but we do get a lot of people just saying you know what can i do and and this is this is our answer to that this is one of those answers where you know this is something that you as an individual can do and if it spreads to other individuals you know it's it just it grows from there and, and if you get that mentality and those conversations spreading then you you know all of a sudden that can actually turn into political change and if you if yeah. you've got that enough united support and that's one of the things that we we haven't had it as much on the recreational side as a united voice everybody has different um, ideas for how to conquer these these issues and so um, I think that uniting around a campaign like release over 20 is is a way that we can you know, get to a point where some of those you know political issues can be you know I guess more effectively, addressed um, but I, but, can I interject but, on the political sure. standpoint just, yeah. just for a second we fought I've got, got a lot of years on you guys we fought that battle in South Carolina for a long time I don't know if I ever told you or not but uh, I was, I'm a past state president of CCA in South Carolina I was the number two president behind Ty Ragsdale for two years and we had gill netting and we fi- finally got to the point that we, we got enough politicians we got enough local people on petitions Voters, ballots, and petitions, you get signatures on something they want it. That was a battle that we had to fight, you know, years ago to get that done. The last surviving net area in South Carolina was a 200-yard strip on the Isle of Palms. And guess whose house that was in front of? One house had permission to gill net in South Carolina. It was the last netting sanctuary in the state. He's no longer with us, but he was a politician. I won't call a name because everybody in South Carolina knows him. He could gill net in front of his house. But it's going to take some political action, guys. It's going to yeah. take guys like us and get the, the younger people. That's the one you got to get behind it. And it's going to take some political clout to ever get rid of the netting because like it was here, it's their God-given right to go out and kill all of the fish they want to kill and they can sit gill nets. That was the thought and the mentality. And it was like that for a long time. It's going to take some political action and, and some people that – it can get the attention of the politicians by getting back, you know, votes. Yeah. Get a petition. And, yeah. And, and that's all great points. And those are the things that we confront every day. And, you know, and I, I don't want to go down the gill, gill net rabbit hole necessarily. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. it, it's, it's so divisive. <laughs> we get a lot of, uh, you know, n- nasty comments and stuff all over the place about it. And, you know, 
that's for another day. I'm happy to come back on and, yeah, and talk yeah. about all those things. But, uh, but you know, it, it's it's such a complex thing in the way that North Carolina's management system works, where um, we've got the Marine Fisheries Commission that's made up of recreational seats and commercial seats and at-large and science seats. And, you know, it's been running a certain way for so long that a lot of these things have just been stalemated in the, in, you know, uh, the status quo is kind of where, where the you know, the votes all tend to fall back on, and those in charge tend to fall back on status quo, which is no action. And so that's kind of where we've gotten with a lot of things, and why you see flounder, where we've been addressing it for 20 years of it being overfished, and and um, and you know had to shut it down last year, even though every three or four years we've been you know left with stock assessments that say. It's overfished and it's in trouble. So here I here I go getting getting into it. But <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess my my point is um, you know, that's something that we like I said we confront all the time, and yeah. um, that's why we're so excited at, about release over twenty is that it gives us a way to get people thinking about things in a united fashion, um, and it, and that can really grow um, in, a, in a great way. Um, and there, there's another thing that uh, I just think is such a powerful quote that. Um, as soon as I heard the original podcast last year with you guys about this program, um, it immediately drew my mind to uh, a quote from a guy named Otto Leopold, who um, is you know one of the fathers of conservation. If you have never heard of him, um, I, you know, I really recommend looking him up. Uh, he wrote a just a fantastic book called The Sand County Almanac. It sits on my desk every day. Um, and he also, you know, authored a lot of other um, books and documents about you know, conservation, the way we think about it in North America, and you know, what has shaped the North American model for conservation. But that quote is, ethical behavior is doing the right thing when no one else is watching, even when doing the wrong thing is legal. And that really spoke to me when I heard you guys talking about this, because I was like, wow, I mean, I, if you could lock me in a room for a week and tell me to come up with, you know, the perfect embodiment of what a conservationist mentality is, you know, is like. And I don't think I could come up with something, something better than release over 20, because at its heart, it is like Dave mentioned earlier, it is a self-imposed bag limit. And, you know, when the law is not telling you that you have to release that fish over 20 inches, but you, you voluntarily decide to make a commitment to, uh, the resource to your fellow anglers and put that fish back and you know acknowledge the fact that it's it's much more valuable back in the water than it is in your cooler. I could not think of a better representation of what conservation means and and that's really really what's what's driven kind of my thought process behind the whole thing is is that quote and you know asking people to to to, to do something that you know that we think is moral even though it's legal to do the opposite and so. Um, you know, that's uh, just a profound statement, I guess, from a from a guy 100 years ago that is still speaking to us today. Yeah, I think that's an incredible way to look at conservation. I've never heard that quote before, um, but it just there's just something that feels so good about doing that. You know, you know, it's the right thing when you do it. It's it's a it's a really a feeling that goes all the way down to the core of like who we are as outdoorsmen and as fishermen and as um, you know, conservation people who are, you know, focused on conservation, but man, that's cool. That's super cool. Um, well, I'm just excited to, to, to get this off the ground, the release over 20. And, and, uh, I think it's going to be a really cool movement. Is there anything, uh, are y'all going to be doing a, any type of website or a store where people can, can buy stickers or shirts or hats or anything like that? Yeah. I've got one thing to add before we transition into actually how to participate. Um, it's kind of in response to a couple of those comments, like you mentioned of, you know, why should I do this? Yeah. Um, I think we want to be clear that we still, you know, very much encourage people to, you know, fill their bag limit and bring, yeah. home, bring some, bring some trout home and, and cook them up for a nice dinner. Um, we've got a bag limit of four here and you know, minimum size limit of 14 inches in North Carolina. And, you know, you can still have your great dinner, you know, for four fish between 14 and 20 inches per day per person. So we want to just make clear that we're we're not asking people to not take any fish home, and you know that's something that we're we're very passionate about people's ability to go out and harvest, you know, wild fish and game 
for themselves. And so yeah. that's just one thing that, <laughs> that bears bears mentioning. That's true. Um, how about y'all, Dave and Ralph? Anything? Any any kind of last comments or anything like that you want to talk about? Yeah. So um, how to get involved? So first of all, we want and had a, a graphic artist make us a pretty cool logo. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Nice, please number twenty logo. Uh, we've got stickers, and um, we're going to have them. Uh, we discussed the probably the easiest way is we're going to put them on our um, online store. We're not planning to profit off these. We're just going to charge like the, the cost for postage and whatnot. It's, I think like a dollar fifty or something. Um, if you order from us, it will, you can just request it and add it to your order, or you could just get this by itself and we'll mail it to you in an envelope. Um, but we just want people to, you know, to only get them if they really sort of pledge to do it. If they if they feel that that's what they want to do, and yeah, I'm going to release over 20. Then we're happy to give you a sticker, put it on your uh, boat, put it on your car, um, let people see it and ask questions and tell them why you're doing it and uh, get them involved. Um, we're talking about apparel. We don't have anything set up just yet, but we're trying to figure out how to do that without um, breaking our bank accounts and, yeah. and and just making it easy on us, really. But we want to have that logo and maybe that quote that uh, Joe said on a shirt. and. Um, kind of going from there I might we might do pre-orders for that but uh, stay tuned but so we I did set up an Instagram page uh, at release over 20 um, it's only got about 20 followers right now but we want people to follow that and also a Facebook group same thing at release over 20 and want to encourage people to join it just join it and um, we're going to start uh, we talked about doing giveaways, um, anything we can do to get more, as many people to jump on the bad wagon as possible. Again, it's not it's not a for-profit thing. This is just like a, a, a way for us to express our um, conservation values and, um, and, and do something positive for the world instead of just uh, running a store, you know. So uh, we hope you'll, you'll join us in... Um, and get involved. Yeah. I, I think another really cool thing that, that people can do, and I'm going to be doing this, is um, whenever you catch a trout, a good trout, you know, if you're going to be doing this release over 20, go on your Instagram story and be like, hey, I just caught this awesome 24 inch trout, um, but I've pledged to release over 20. It's a movement between, through CCA and I Strike, and I'm going to let this fish go. And just put that on your Instagram story and let other people see it and let it, that kind of catch on. I think. Uh, video and talking about it on, on people that are pledging through it is going to be a great way for other people to see it and then and be like, hey, that's something I want to do and, and go forward with yeah. it. So, uh, I think yeah, and yeah um, definitely if you do that um, at, at our page, at Release Over 20, if you do that, mm -hmm. and if you go to the Instagram page right now, uh, I've already added like three of those. Oh, you <laughs> have? Got, right on. I don't even yeah, follow it yet. I don't even realize that was up. I got a guy uh, named uh, David um, that – Fish with me in a tournament. I got it was his first trout he's ever caught on top water. It was 20 inches. He's releasing it. I got my son Ian and myself. And so yeah, we'd love to have fill that page up with those videos if we can. Yeah, that's so awesome. So if you if you add the page, we'll we'll repost it and uh, make you famous and just get get involved, man. Sweet. Uh, anything else from you, Joe? Um, yeah, just kind of going along those things I mean I, I that's I think the best way that, that we can grow this thing is by participating on on social media and um, you know like like they, like they've mentioned we're gonna be doing giveaways each week um, to start things out where if you you know do things that you've seen many other pages do you know, follow it um, you know, make your own post releasing you know really any trout you know it doesn't have to be 20 inches if you if you don't catch one that big one day and you release a you know, little nine inch guy, then, you know, still, you know, tag the page and yeah. we're going to, we're still going to be featuring people on there um, to, you know, shout you out. And then we're all, we're going to be doing some drawings like they mentioned for whether it's um, you know, some stuff from my strike or some stuff from the CCA inventory um, and, and as, as well as a sticker to send out to, to people and thank them for, for joining. Um, and so, you know, that'll be the main way that, 
that you can uh, kind of engage with the initiative. And then, like we said, uh, the other way to get a sticker would be to uh, purchase it on the iStrike website. And we're going to have it available on ours too, but it's probably just going to link you right back to the iStrike website uh, so that it's all in one place. And, you know, so you can show off your support and, you know, get people thinking and get, get them asking you why you're, you're letting go of that big trophy trout and, you know, kind of get those, get, get to talking about that. Um, and then, you know, we'll even, you know, try to be, adding some things on of ways that we can feature people. And, um, you know, I, I know, Joe, we've already done a video with you and Captain Ray Britton. Um, we plan on doing many others. We're going to meet up with the Ice Strike guys kind of once the whole travel restrictions get lifted. We've got a whole video series that we're working on of, you know, getting with guys, um, you know, fishing guides, um, guys in the industry like the Ice Strike guys, you know, people who have been around these things for a long time and just kind of getting their thoughts about, you know, conservation and what the Release Over 20 movement means to them um, and, you know, kind of them making their uh, their own personal commitment on the video. And, you know, it's kind of been a cool way to, you know, engage with people that know a whole lot about these things and, um, yeah. and are you know, trustworthy names. And so we're excited about those things. So we just ask that people look out for it. Um, we've got a page set up on our um, on our website, ccanc.org. Uh, it's got its own designated tab on our website called Release Server 20. And underneath that, there's um, some information. There's a there's a write up that that I did with with Dave. Kind of just you know, uh, it's a summary of you know, the beginnings of the campaign and you know where we'd like it to uh, to, to go in the future and you know so, some of our thoughts around it. Uh, we've also got a tab underneath it for uh, what something called Release Sense, which is a, a CCA national kind of program um, about you know, proper um, uh, catch and release strategies and tactics. Cool. So you know we want to make sure that people are you know properly putting these fish back, and you know we're, they're not just floating away dead anyway. You know we want to make sure we're going the right way. Um, you know still grab your picture, get your grip and grin, but make sure we're putting these fish back. Um, back safely so that they can swim swim and be caught another day um, and then you know like I said we'll just be putting out more stuff so we ask people just to you know follow us and follow I strike on Instagram I strike fishing I believe and CCA underscore NC on Instagram and um, we'll be putting out a lot of new stuff that people can follow along with and, and get involved awesome uh, and I'm going to take the, that one step further I'm just feeling motivated to do this right now but through Eastern Angling my, my guide business what I'd like to do um, is within a week of the release date of this podcast. So when this podcast goes live, if you hop on your Instagram story and do a video saying, hey, I'm pledging to release fish over 20 inches this year um, and tag CCA and tag release over 20 um, and tag my, my page, then uh, I, I will give away a free um, trout fishing trip, summer top water trout fishing trip um, it, for someone, to someone who's done that in the first week after this release date for this um, this podcast. So go do that. Um, go pledge to, and if you, if I see you killing fish over 20 after you pledge that and I gave you a free trip, we're going to have some words, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, uh, are, are any of the three of us eligible for that? Cause yes, definitely. <laughs> Y'all are definitely eligible for that. Y'all put in the most work, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get out there and do some, do some, uh, spring slash summer top water fishing, but you got to pledge it. You got to put it on your story. Um, you sharing it. What the, the whole push for that is that you're going to be sharing that on your story and more people are going to hear about it and this will kind of snowball effect. So um, does anyone else have anything else that they want to share before we, uh, we end this podcast? Yeah, I just have a, a, something that I'd like to share. It's something I found in the, in the trout manual that uh, South Carolina put out and it's a, it's a couple, uh, I call them truths that are kind of funny that uh, relate to fisheries uh, biologists and uh, it came from Charlie Winter. Charlie Winter, yeah, yeah Ralph's yeah, old friend, Char Ralph. Char Charlie and I fished together for like 10 12 years. One hell of a guy, but he was funny and he really was the first true conservationist I say I fished with and, and, and met and just just enjoyed the guy. Great sense of humor. And these are some of his Charlie isms. He was just alternate, you know, yeah. or something. Okay. <laughs> what Charlie's saying was his like compared to a fish, says, Once you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> That's a good one. That's very true. If your parents had no children, you probably won't. That's another good one. Yeah. Fish that are killed when they're young and small probably won't grow up. <laughs> the last one. The survival rate of fish in an ice chest is generally zero. 
He sounds like a smart this was, guy. This was in the, this was in the uh, at South Carolina DNR Trout Magazine, written by Charlie. He lived that. He was funny. He was a great guy. <laughs> I like that. That's those. great. That is great. Well, cool. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll have to use those for promotion. Yeah, I think I think we should for sure. Uh, well, cool. Well, if if we're all good, and guys, I'm gonna go and apologize. For y'all listening, we are. This is the first time I've skyped three guests in together, um, so there might have been a little bit of lag, a little bit of uh, feedback noise, but we just really wanted to get this out to y'all. And I'm not the techiest person in the world, but but this is uh, this is how you're going to get it. So uh, if it's if it's uh, if it's a little little awkward our conversation, I, we apologize for that. We're we're doing the best we can, but um, if everyone else is good, I'm going to go ahead and close her out. Y'all good? Um. Yeah, I'd just like to commend you, Judd, and Eastern Angling, and, and Dave and Ralph and iStrike. I mean, there's not enough people out there um, that are you know willing to speak up and talk about uh, some of these things and how we can confront the issues of, of our fisheries. So, uh, you know, you guys really deserve a lot of credit um, for, you know, putting your faces out there and, you know, doing podcasts like this and being a part of things um, that, you know, can really create a positive good in both of our states. So th- thank all three of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, guys, thanks for checking that out. Like we said, if this uh, you know strikes home with you, definitely pledge to release over twenty this year. Uh, it's going to be a great initiative, and I think it's something that we should just you know instill into uh, you know our life of fishing as long as we need to until maybe this is something you know an upper slot for for trout is something that is put in in North Carolina and South Carolina. But um, share it with your friends. Uh, it's we're, we're hoping that this can be a movement um, that that can really take take foot and grow um grow to be something pretty big so thanks for checking it out and we will see y'all in the next episode of eastern current later